Coming up on Radio Vision, we talk about the difficulties faced during Asian Heritage Month, and students sign up for the Pfizer vaccine. I'm Massimo Del Rio, and this is Radio Vision. Yearbooks will be distributed on Thursday during both lunches at the cafeteria. Please stop by during your lunch to pick up your copy. With the FDA approving the Pfizer vaccine for ages 12 through 15, many students have already received their first shots. Here's reporter Pilar Vargas from our sister site, The Rate of Voice, with more. On May 10th, the FDA and CDC announced the approval of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine on children ages 12 through 15. Many students rushed to county sites and clinics to get their first shot. Vaccination sites around the county were filled with young students following the FDA's recent approval. At Miami Sunset Senior High School, teenagers and their parents waited in long lines to register, fill out forms, and get the shot. Stations with nurses were set up in the school's gym to give the 12 to 15 year olds the vaccination. I just got my first dose of the vaccine and I can't wait to get my second dose. I'm going to go hang out with my friends and family soon because I'm not scared to get the virus anymore. After receiving the shot, the kids had to wait 15 minutes to ensure their safety. The sooner that the younger population gets the vaccine, the sooner our lives can get back to normal. This is Pilar Vargas reporting for the Raider Voice. Grab-and-go lunches offer convenience and safety, but at what cost? Reporters Samantha Gillen and Victor Kirsch from our sister site, The Raider Voice, take a look at the use of plastic on campus. Everyone on campus is familiar with these containers during lunchtime. As part of the grab-and-go lunch format, plastic containers separated food items, ensuring easy selections and avoiding large crowds. Even if these safety measures had an impact on preventing the spread of COVID-19, what impact did they have on our environment? According to the Sage Shining staff, 5,000 plastic containers are used per day to provide lunch items to both upper school campuses and the business office. SAGE also provides 960 plastic water bottles per day. That is 41,270 plastic containers and bottles per week and about 149,000 per month. The plastic pollution at Gulliver is a lot. We use everything with plastic. Everything is in plastic containers. We should find a solution to um, use less plastic. Green bags labeled degradable are also used daily to carry items. According to East Waste, the readable bags are made from plastic with other chemicals added that cause the plastic to break down and disintegrate over time when exposed to sunlight and heat. Although the bags are labeled as eco-friendly, they can become harmful to the environment. Plastic takes forever to break down, therefore um, this, you know, the plastic will only end up in the water, in the ocean, right, and in landfills and, and the animals and the ocean will end up ingesting it. Dean of Students Tyrone Sundahl mentioned ways the school will cut down on plastic next year. Our plans are to resume school as normal uh, as, we, as possible, and that probably indicates that we will go back to you know, the ways in which we used to deliver the food service. So how do we tackle this problem? In a recent survey of 118 students, more than half said they would bring their own containers to school. This would help alleviate the amount of plastic used on a daily basis. I would bring plastic containers from home so that the amount of plastic is reduced at school. If you could bring your own reusable container, I feel like you should. Uh, I know my parent does whenever she works here. Uh, she works in the business department and she brings her own container. I bring my container when it's useful to me at a certain time, but sometimes I forget it at home and that's when I use the water bottles. But I do feel like it's a pretty good idea to bring your own container. As for Sundal, this is already a common practice. If you paid attention, well, the last couple of years, there's a handful of us adults that have been doing it on our own. Uh, I've brought, uh, had a Red Bull that I brought every day for a long time this year at the shelve it. Uh, but I imagine that, you know, the, with, with Sage, who's a really good partner, we'll be able to accommodate, you know, uh, as long as, you know, their food safety standards are met. For the next week, we will have to deal with the use of plastic. However, next year we can do our part and find ways to reduce our carbon footprint. This is Sammy Gitlin and Victor Kirch reporting for the Raider Voice. This month is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Reporter Nina Castro Alves sheds light on issues Asian Americans have faced this past year. The month of May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month and is dedicated to recognizing the contributions and influence of this community to the history and accomplishments of America. 
This month's celebration should bring attention to the increase in violence and animosity that the Asian American community has been facing recently. According to NBCNews.com, the anti-Asian hate crimes have increased by nearly 150% in 2020. It's really sad to see all the Asian and Asian Americans are suffering and facing violence and discrimination. It should not happen to anyone regardless of their race or background. The race, skin color, country, and culture I represent have been insulted and attacked. Um, but it is more like helpless because too many people only believe what they want to believe rather than the truth of the matter. It's a really disturbing trend. And um, clearly we all have to play a part in reversing that, you know, making sure that we're reaching out to uh, Asian Americans, Asian Pacific Islanders, so that they know that we're on their side, right? That the violence is completely unacceptable. Wherever we are nowadays, stereotypes have been instilled everywhere, silent or not. It is important to not propagate stereotypes as they are extremely harmful to marginalized groups, along with microaggressions. The whole um, stereotypes about Asians eating fat or like eating other exotic foods actually stem from a more a uh, dark situation. Yes, people do eat those kinds of meats uh, in the homelands, but like it's not for the, I guess, A, it's a, another culture. B, it also stems from the famine that people endured uh, back in their own home country, which they have to eat from like certain uh, non-traditional uh, sources of food. I think um, we need to increase t teacher sensitivity toward um, the microaggression because sometimes people or teachers or like in pe people in general, they don't realize that it is actually microaggression. We hope that this month can bring some awareness to these hate crimes and everyone can celebrate their heritage this May. For Radio Vision, I'm Nina Castro Alves. Not a Priya with sports. Thanks, Moss. Here are some of the highlights from this year's sports. The boys and girls lacrosse team had a great season. The girls, for the first time in school history, made it to the playoffs and had a great run. The boys won the district championship and made it to the regional semifinals where they fell to a close game against Belen. The girls' tennis team had an amazing season going all the way to the state semifinals. The team was led by two freshmen, Valentina Rossi and Jaden Jagnalizer, two sophomores, Mia Suarez and Leah Fletcher, and one junior, Tori Hagenlocker. Boys and girls track and field had a remarkable season, with both teams having at least three athletes go to states. The boys' 4x400 team shattered records. Congrats to both teams. In NBA news, the Heat had their first playoff game against the Bucks on Saturday. The Heat lost in an overtime thriller in Milwaukee, 109-107, to with Chris Middleton draining the last bucket with less than a second left. Last year, they swept them 4-1. to Will the Heat make a statement that the Bucks can't beat them, or will it be a chance for redemption for the Bucks? Here's the weather. This week, the weather will be mostly sunny with highs in the mid 80s and lows in the mid 70s. There will be a 0% chance of rain. Thank you, and now back to Moss in the studio. Thanks, Jaden. That's all for Radar Vision. I'm Massimo Del Rio, and we'll see you next year.